Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to another episode of Figma Fridays. My name is RJ Nye, and I'm a senior graphic designer at Rockstar Studios. And today I just wanted to go over a few tips to help speed up your design workflow in Figma. For this video, I produced a couple of screens for a fake music player app, and uh, there's nothing much more than this, it's just these two screens, but they're enough to establish uh, some kind of system from. Um, something where I can start establishing colors or establishing icons and icon variants. And you can see that the primary color for these two screens is blue, and um, in this case, I only have just a preset amount of color values that I've saved. And um, the reason I've done that is because, uh, let's say in this case, for this particular project, I want users to be able to change the, uh, the color theme of this app. Or maybe it's something where we haven't decided what our, color, uh, our colors are for our brand. Um, because I've designed everything so that every tint and shade of blue on these two pages are not actually tints and shades, but actually um, uh, opacities set on those layers, it means that I can select these two screens, for example, go down to my uh, selection colors panel, change that to another of one of my primary color styles, and you can see that it changed everything to orange. All the tints and hues or shades got changed to orange as well. If I change it to green, you can see how it changes from, uh, from that as well. So for example, you can see that uh, like down here I have this uh, blue circle behind the pause button. And this has the color style of that blue that I've set for my project. But using the layer opacity, I'm able to control um, how light that blue is. And uh, doing that up front means that uh, I don't have to worry about having to establish every single tint and shade of a color while I'm still trying to figure out the overall aesthetic and branding of a product. Um, for this particular uh, uh, design, I do want everything to reflect an overall color uh, scheme, so in this case it's blue, and so that means that because I'm just using uh, tints and shades, I don't have to worry too much about all the fine detail stuff just yet. The next thing I wanted to talk about was auto layout, and in Figma, auto layout is one of those key features where, even though it has a small learning curve, once, you're, once you've learned it and you've understood how, how it works, you can create incredibly powerful reflexive designs where you don't have to spend too much extra time worrying about fine details and everything. Because um, I've definitely been there before in the past when I didn't have auto layout if uh, the size of a particular component changed, but it was a very long design where there's uh, you know 10 different iterations that have to be updated. It was such a pain to update everything. Um, but with auto layout, you can do it in the blink of an eye, honestly. And so for this home page, I have a recently played module where it shows recently uh, played albums that I've listened to. And on the player screen, I have an up next uh, module that shows upcoming songs in a playlist. And based on the, um, you know, the, the album name or the track name, the size of the component should change. And because of auto layout, I'm going to type a... Uh, Because of auto lay layout, you can see that no matter what the, in this case, the album title is, everything changes in real time. The size of the component changes, the spacing between the components change. And so it means I don't have to take an extra, you know, two or three minutes to update everything in real, uh, to, to make it reflect any of those design changes. And same thing goes for the songs down here. And let me show you how those uh, components are built, how I was able to build them. So you can see that this component, the actual main component itself, has an auto layout property, uh, which determines the overall uh, spacing between the content in the middle and the overall uh, layout itself. And so, um, and then this has the white property and then a uh, uh, drop shadow that I'm using effectively as an outer stroke. And uh, within this auto layout component, there's uh, two more sets of auto layout um, uh, groupings, I guess. There is this auto layout group, which has the artist name and the track name. And then there's also this one down here, which has the uh, icon to indicate that this is a song versus an album on the other module, for example, and the title of the track. And so from here, I can control um, the, the spacing between the icon and the title. And then with this one, I can control the spacing between 
um, you know, the thumbnail and and the track and artist name. And let me rebuild that in, in real time. This just show you how how uh, quick <laughs> you can build something like this. So if I'm just recreating this one with a track name is Hand Drops, artist name is Lorraine James. Change that to medium, make it a bit smaller. I'll change it to black and maybe 50%. Oh, and since I have this icon here, let me uh, duplicate that track icon, because that is the first piece of our uh, auto layout puzzle that we have to establish. So I use Shift A to quickly um, apply auto layout to a group of objects that I have. And from here, I can control the spacing in between the two. In this case, um, I'm okay with, actually, let's make it six. Make sure this is centered, make sure that's centered. And then since I have these two, now I can group these together, also apply auto layout, make sure this is left aligned, maybe make the spacing about maybe, f let's see, two, two pixels, is that right? And then for the thumbnail, uh, let me bring one in from my desktop here. And this is Lorraine James for you and I. I bring that in, resize this since that is extremely large. I'll make it about, let's say, 48 pixels or so. Give us some rounded corners for aesthetic. Let's have these two components. Also apply auto layout to that. And you can see we have the essentially the bones of this component ready made with auto layout. And from here, I can uh, already apply the background color to this component, which in this case I want it to be white. I'm going to apply um, rounded uh, corners on the overall component. And then because I don't want the content to be butted up against the edges, I'm gonna add some spacing on the outside. So this is for left and right, and this is for top and bottom. And let's make this a little bit more rounded. And for good measure, I can also add a stroke as well. And so you can see uh, using auto layout, I've created this component, recreated what I already had here. And if I had to change the artist's uh, track name, Oh, oh, actually, let's see, what happened here? Uh, this, oh, this is set to centered, yep. This is something where we, <laughs> you may not nail it right out of the gate. It's always a matter of um, testing how it works and then going back and trying to figure out uh, what settings you may or may not have turned on. And uh, in this case, uh, let's change that to anything else. And you can see that the entire component automatically grows because of those auto layout properties. And uh, this also uh, accounts for, um, for example, if I have a, a much more dynamic um, module that I'm creating where I have multiple track names in a row, and I also apply uh, auto layout to these, they will all respond in real time. I don't have to change the the size of this component. I don't I don't have to manually uh, maintain the spacing between everything because of auto layout, because of all these different auto layout uh, configurations I've made, updating one thing updates everything else in real time in a matter of, you know, a fraction of a second. The next thing I wanted to go over in this video was uh, icons and icon variants. And, you know, normally you'll have multiple states of an icon, whether it's active, inactive, or hover, or disabled, or something. But whenever you have so many different icon states, let's say you wanted to change the icon down the road, well, you'd have to make sure that your icon updates are being propagated for every single variant that you've created. So, for example, I have this uh, playlist icon that I've created for the uh, nav bar for that home screen. And um, it's just a really basic... Uh, icon I've created where it's like, you know, this would be the the album or artist uh, uh, photo and then whatever bit of text here. And this is the component itself. And because I also have an active state for it, I wanted to make sure that I actually brought in an instance of this component into this new component that I'm making. So this here is actually just an instance of the off state version of it simply with its own color property uh, assigned to it. 
And so let's say here I was like, you know what, I actually don't want these to be square, I want these maybe to be uh, circles or something. And I give it that property, you can see in real time the other variant that I've made also updates in real time. I don't have to worry about going back and uh, applying you know, this new circle uh, shape into every single variant that I've made. So for example, if I have this icon here and I decide that you know I want to change the, uh, the overall appearance of this, like if I don't want the uh, inner circle anymore, I can just delete it from here. And because this is an instance of that, that circle gets removed from the variant. Um, obviously I'd have to go back and make sure that this uh, is updated so that it's still visible, but I didn't have to worry about also making sure that that shape was removed from the instance. And you can also do that for uh, some other types of components as well. Like for example, um, here I have an album art uh, component, and then I have a reflection of that that is just an instance of that album art. So it means that whatever this is updated to, which in this case I will change it to, um, let's say this one here, because the reflection is using of uh, an instance of that component, you can see that it updated in real time. So I can always make sure that um, I don't have to spend all that extra effort uh, to update everything and make sure everything is consistent. Like imagine if I didn't have an instance of that and I was using another bit of artwork, it might not match and that would look very jarring. But in this case, because I am using the instance, I don't have to worry about making sure everything is consistent. I just apply it once and then because I'm relying upon uh, Figma's component system, and then for the other stuff, auto layout, everything just kind of works. Anyway, that's going to do it for me. Uh, hopefully these tips have proved to be uh, helpful for you. Uh, the goal is to create a much more foundational base upon which to you know, build all your designs for a new product or a new app or website or something. And ultimately the goal would be to you know, create a design system from there. And once you have everything set up properly up front, all that other stuff is a breeze. And so, uh, anyway, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you next time.